The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now. Here I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and a host of Between Taramina's on an Oriented Intelligence. I'd like to welcome those on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube. A lot to look at this week around the league, of course. Um, you know, a lot has occurred. Um, basically, um, and we're going through, we're going through a course. We're getting in the heart of the heart of track season. Obviously, the um, the closing of the dual meet season. Um, we're going to preview the league meets coming up over at um, over at Rochester Adams and also at West Bloomfield. Um, also, we're going to talk. Matt Meyer released a very interesting um softball preview. I mean, like of course it was a little, you know, softball's been heading in the middle of May. Of course, we're starting to get into postseason play really close to that. Um, so we're going to look at what Matt Mowry said on the, um, on in my prep zone from softball. Um, obviously we got a lot to really look at, especially when it comes to track and field. Um, obviously when you look at the league, when you look at a course, the, um, obviously when you look at a course, um, let's go to softball first, because I think softball will be very interesting here to look at here. Um, apologies if for my, um, phone here, I'm actually pulling up the, um, pulling up Mowry's article here. Um, I think when you look at, of course, he released like the 10 top 10 Oakland County softball teams to watch, um, released that article, um, as we head in the final stretches of the softball year, um, obviously, you know, you got to start. And I think when you look at softball, it starts and ends with Lake Orion. Um, when you look at the dragons, what they have, of course, um, Lake Orion has been known for their hitting. I mean, like, obviously they have a solid pitcher. Um, obviously, of course, they won the red, were a district champion last year. I think they're well on the way to winning a red title this year. Um, obviously, you look at players like Avery Case, Sophie Stronic. Um, also, you got Riley um, Limberger, you got Grace Luby. Um, Sydney Bell's been playing really good for, for them. Anna Gardner, Alex Hazen is another solid player for them. And of course, Ellie Britt, we know what she does at shortstop. Um, for Coach Joe Waitera, um, when you really look at Lake Orion, um, if I think Lake Orion's weakness usually is going to be is if they have to deal with a very good starting pitcher um, because you know they can hit. I mean, that's clearly where I think if they can, if they can put up at least 10, 11 runs a game, you know, I'll tell you what, that's going to be something to really watch for um, is – they could be a serious contender. I mean, now, when you look at the district this year that they're in, they got Clarkson's in their district, and you have Rochester Adams, of course. Adams, let's not forget, they upset Lake Orion in the regional semis last year, which was mind-boggling how that occurred. Um, but I think when you look at the Dragons this year, this is a much different team. Um, I think that, you know, if they can hit, if they can hit anybody, look out in the state. I mean, there's a reason why they're ranked eight in the state right now. There's a reason why that, you know, they're playing really good softball right now. Um, but Lake Orion really is the team I think to watch for. Um, and I know Matt Mowry's got them ranked number two right now in the, in Oakland County. And I think it's a good spot where they're at right now. I mean, like, you know, you got to look at the quote from Ric Flair. I mean, Ric Flair always says to be the man, you got to beat the man. And, Lake Orion, you know, they beat some good teams. They beat Country Day. I, I mean, yeah, Birmingham and Detroit Country Day didn't have a starting pitcher. But bottom line is, Lake Orion, they're a legit team. They are very legit. And they're going to be a dangerous team. I think they're going to be a tough out this year in, in softball. I think they're going to be a really tough out. Um, another team to watch is Stony Creek. I mean, obviously, when you look at the Cougars, um, Stony Creek, they've had a really nice year. I mean, I mean right now... I mean, everything starts and ends with um, with Aaron Flynn. I mean, of course, Aaron Flynn, we know from girls basketball, playing for Coach Kellen James. I mean, like, obviously, um, you know, but Flynn has had a really nice year for Stony Creek. Of course, he's going to um, Saginaw Valley State um, for softball. Um, they also have another pitcher in Medi Levayette. Um, of course, um, 
He's another solid pitcher for Stony Creek. I mean, like, obviously, then your catcher is a Chris, Krista Munn. Um, she's been really good all year long for them. Um, you know, their infield is solid, of course. You have Kate Steffens and um, Daniel Bryant. Um, you know, when you look at Stony Creek this year, um, you know, you got to look at the Cougars, and Stony Creek's a solid team. I mean, let's not forget, their three losses this year, of course, have been to Edwardsburg, of course, and um, Grand Blank, of course. Grand Blank is number six in the state right now. Um, I mean, I know Grand Blank has had, they've, They've had, they've had, they're, they're solid. I mean, Grand Blank is traditionally a solid team. I mean, honestly, when you look at the Bobcats, I mean, this is a very interesting team to really look at with Grand Blank. I mean, and when you look at the Bobcats, obviously, this is a team that I think could do some damage. I mean, obviously, you know, with Grand Blank, I mean, like, it definitely, it'll be very interesting to see how, how, but Stony Creek is a sleeper here in this. In this, um, they could be a sleeper in the district as well. I mean, their district looks very manageable. Um, you know, you got Rome. I think Romeo's in there. I think you got Rochester's in there. Um, but I think Stony Creek's got a good chance to do some damage. Um, wild card teams to watch in this. Obviously, you got to look at Bloomfield Hills is one. I uh, I know Maori didn't mention. I know they like to hit. They like to score a lot of runs. I know their coach very well, Dan Whitemeyer. Um, used to be a basketball coach. Now he's just focused on softball. Um, so, but Blue Bay Hills is a team I think can really hit. I mean, averaging almost, I think, 11 runs a game. I mean, like, or something like that, of course. Um, but, you know, Blue Bay Hills could be a team that they could surprise some people. I mean, who knows? They could really do some damage. Um, North Farmington's another team. Um, I've heard a lot about the Raiders, especially when you look at what they got with the um with a lot of their girls basketball team playing softball. Um, you know, obviously Jeff Simpson, um, who just stepped down coaching girls basketball at North Farmington, is an assistant coach over there. Um, but I think the Raiders could be a team to really watch for. And nobody's and I don't know why nobody is taught has talked a lot about Clarkston. I mean, like, people have said, well, okay, and even Rochester Rams, I mean, like, but first with Clarkson, I mean, Clarkston, you know, let's not forget, you got Katie there, you got, um, you got Kira Tommy there, I mean, you know, when you look at Clarkston, I mean, like, I think Clarkson's a team that I don't think anybody's been talking about all year long. Yeah, they've been struggling, they have, they're not the same team they've been in years past, but it's still Clarkston. I mean, like, you know, I mean, like, I, I think that the Wolves right now, if the Wolves play what they're capable of doing, then I think this is going to be really interesting to see what happens with Clarkson. I mean, I think when you look at the Wolves' bottom line is you got to think, you know, they could upset somebody. I mean, you know, in that district. And then there's Rochester Adams. People say, well, Adams, let's not forget, last year, they still got experience, you know what I mean? Obviously with Coach Francis Um, but when you look at a team like Clarkson and you look at a team like Adams, Adams, I, Adams last year, Nobody talked about Adams. Nobody did. And look what happened. I mean, like, Adams went and pulled off some, several big upsets. Um, they were, I think, the last softball team last year to be competing in the postseason, which was just mind-boggling. You know, obviously, I know Coach Branson Wojcic has done a really nice job with that program, but, you know, but nobody in the right frame of mind would have thought Adams would had been the last team playing last year. I mean, nobody would have thought it. I mean, people would have thought, okay, maybe it was Stony Creek, maybe it was Lake Orion, but nobody in the right frame of mind thought it had been Rochester Adams last year. And I know not a lot of people have been talking about Adams. I mean, like, Adams has been a team that's been, you know, having their moments of up and down. I mean, like, when you look at the Highlanders, I mean, so bottom line is, when you look at softball, I mean, I still think Lake Orion's a team to beat. Um, but, you know, when you look at that district, that district's very risky a little bit, especially when you look at Clarkson and Rochester Adams in there. Um, and then you look at a team like Stony Creek, who I think can make some noise in their district. I think Romeo's in there, um, which could be very interesting. Or Utica Eisenhower, especially. I think Utica Eisenhower could give Stony Creek some problems. Um, 
But I think that could be a really interesting um, district over there um, with Stony Creek. I mean, like in other districts to keep an eye on, obviously, you know, you got to look at the Farm Tales Mercy district. Of course, Farm Tales Mercy is loaded with proven talent every year. I mean, we know how good the Marlins have been. Um, I, I think bottom line is, you know, when you look at teams in the state that can make some noise um, in softball, especially in Oakland County, um, right now we look at the OAA, obviously, you know, Lake Oregon and Stony Creek are ranked in the top 10, but Adams could be a scary team. Um, Bloompy Hills, we mentioned earlier, but nobody's talking about Berkeley. I mean, Berkeley has been a very odd team to figure out. And the reason why, yeah, they played a tough schedule, but bottom line is when you look at the Bears, um, Berkeley, you know, when you look at, um, <coughs> I mean, they got some playmakers. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at the Bears, um, their softball program's been on the rise. And I think, you know, they're making that next step. They're on their, I think, I when you look at their district, I mean, like, you know, it could be interesting because you got Royal Oaks in there. I'm not sure if Troy Athens or Troy's in there. I'm not sure about that. I mean, I got to relook at the districts again. But I'll tell you what, I think Berkeley could be a sleeper. You know, you look at Berkeley Athletics, you know, last couple years, you know, remember they had that volleyball run. I think it was this season where they made the quarterfinals. Um, and then, of course, we know about the girls' basketball run a couple years ago when they shocked Detroit Renaissance. Um, I mean, Berkeley, you know, Berkeley has been like, they're a team that, they're a school that, you know, they can, they, they have athletes. They have proven athletes who can go and, you can, it can go and shock some people. I mean, like, they have done that in the past. I mean, like, you know, when you look at Berkeley, I mean, like, you look at, of course, obviously, you know, the history. You look at, of course, the success they've had recently, um, particularly in the girls' sports. Um, you know, when they made that run in volleyball, they made that run in um, girls' basketball. Um, you know, but softball, I think Berkeley could make a run if things go right. If they do, look out, because I think Berkeley can make a serious run. Um, I mentioned earlier with Bloomfield Hills, they can hit, obviously. Pitching's a question mark for this team. Um, obviously, when you look at the Blackhawks, um, as I mentioned earlier, I know Dan Whitemire very well. Um, but it's going to come down for me is when I look at Bloomfield Hills is, can they, you know, if they run into a very good pitcher, they could be in some trouble. And I think that's really where the case I see with Bloomfield Hills. It's kind of very similar to that of Lake Orion where if Lake Orion ran into a very good pitcher, who knows what could happen? I mean, like, that's the same thing in Hills. I mean, like, I think, you know, Bloomby Hills, you know, I could see a lot of, like, 17-14 or, like, 20-21-18 type games, you know what I mean? You know, they, they can they can go, they can score with anybody. The question for me with Bloomby Hills is, do they have the defense? I mean, that's the big-time question when I look at the Blackhawks is, do they have enough defense in pitching, you know, to do to do some significant damage, make some impact. Um so that's my take on Bloom Beer. So that's my take um when you look at the top teams in the OA for softball, um bottom line is um you really gotta look at is, you know, Matt Murray did a really nice job um releasing the um releasing the um Oakland County top teams for um softball. I mean like obviously you got some other proven teams in there. Um, he did release 25 softball players to watch, um, you know, so I'm not surprised, you know what I mean, with some of them. I mean, like, obviously, you look at, um, you know, you look at players like, um, interesting with Farmington. I mean, Farmington, you know, I mean, obviously, you got Riley Bohanan at first base for Farmington. I mean, like, um, she's, been a, she's been really good for Farmington all year long. 479, 49 hits as a sophomore um, last season. Of course, all region honors, the Western Michigan commit. Um, Obviously, you know, Ella Katie, we talked about Katie, obviously with Clarkston. I mean, I still don't understand how Clarkston's not getting any respect from, as a team, but especially when you look at the players that Clarkson usually pans out every year. I mean, like, obviously. Um, of course, Katie's going to Illinois next year. Um, 462, 41 RBIs, 33 runs scored, and three homers as a junior. Um... And then, of course, with Lake Orion, there's Avery Case. We talked about her, obviously, what she's been doing. Um, hitting north of 450 in the first 10 games with Lake Orion. That's insane. That is insane numbers for the Dragons. It's really insane. 
Um, Aaron Flynn, we talked about. Um, with Stony Creek. Uh, Maddie Leboyet, um, we talked about with her going to Alma College next year. Um, Ella McDonald for Adams, obviously, when you look at her. I mean, like, you look at, of course, what she, she's been doing for Rochester Adams. And, of course, she made a lot of noise last year making that postseason run um, that Adams made. I mean, like, just really. But she's going to be a key player come postseason time for um, Rochester Adams if they want to make some noise. She's a fair State commit. Um, and then, of course, there's Maddie Pope from Farmington. 500 with 30 runs as a sophomore. Committed to Grand Valley. I mean, that's nuts. That's unbelievable. I mean, Farmington, could they be a player? Maybe. I know they got to deal with Farm Tills Mercy in the district. Maybe North Farmington as well. Um, but I think if um, if Farmington can get enough, like, offense, you know what I mean? Who knows? I think they can make some noise. Um, and then, of course, Kira Tomey at Clarkson, obviously. You know, Tommy played basketball. Central Michigan commit for softball. I um, mean, hit 579 in the air. Um, she's going to play with her um, older sister, Abby Tommy, who's also in Mount Pleasant. Um, so I'm curious to see how um, how Tommy does um, the final month of May before, um, before um, you know, going to Mount Pleasant um, next season. So... A lot to look at, obviously. Um, other players to watch. Obviously, Sydney Bell. We talked about her from Lake Orion. Um, obviously, we have, um, you know, we got Lindsey Dort Dortman, the catcher for North Farmington. I think she's going to make some noise for the Raiders. Um, you got Lily Dowell from Berkeley. Pitcher, she can play utility player. I mean, like, and that utility player is really important in softball. Um, Anna Carlson, Bloomfield Hills, of course, you know, she pitcher, she can play the outfield. Um, could she be that pitcher for Dan Whitemire? You know, if not, you know what I mean? Because you know she can hit. I mean, like, the big question for me with Bloomfield Hills is, do they have the defense to do well? I mean, that's the big-time question there for them. Maddie um, Eckert from Lake Orion. I mean, like, I mean, like, I think that, um, you know, another piece for Coach Joe Whitera to rely on. Um, obviously, you have... Um, Haley Hurley, center field from Troy Athens. Um, interesting. I mean, like, um, Troy Athens has been up and down this year. Um, I think that the Red Hawks, you know what I mean? If um, if the Red Hawks want to make a, a deep run in the postseason, I mean, this is going to be a big um, opportunity for Hurley to um, make some noise, obviously. Um, and then, of course, you have Emma Leonard's another one for Troy Athens that I think could make some noise for the Red Hawks as well. She's only a, um, a, you know, and I think, you know, I think, you know, she's a big-time player at catcher. She played the infield positions. Um, but, like I said, I mean, like, it, for for Troy Athens, those two are going to have to be key if they want to make a run in the postseason. Um, and then, of course, there's Riley Lumberger, Lake Orion. Um, Grace, uh, Grace Luby at Lake Orion. Um, both of them are going to be big, big contributors for Lake Orion. Obviously, they got the hitting. Pitching's Pitching will be interesting to watch. Um, Lombugger is the pitcher for Lake Orion, starting pitcher for them. Um, so, very curious to see what the Dragons do. Um, but they're going to be big-time players. They're going to rely a lot on their... Um, they got a lot of youth and a lot of veterans on that team. Um, Lily Lucka, we talked earlier. Um, she's going to be relying a lot for Rochester Adams. Grace Main, obviously. Girls basketball standoff for Bloomby Hills as well. Um... And then, of course, you have, um, and then, obviously, you have, um, you have um, Grace Sally at North Farmington. Um, like I said, if, if she can make some noise, I'll tell you, making some impact, obviously. Soapy Steronic at Lake Orion, we mentioned her earlier. Um, Emma Weber at Seaholm, if Seaholm wants to make a run, her and her, um, her and her, and her sister, Lola Weber, um, they're going to be big time pieces if Seaholm wants to make a run in the postseason. Um, so when you really look at softball, and I think Matt Maher did a really good job with this, is, you know, I really think when you look at teams that can make some noise seriously, I think Lake Orion's got the best case, I think, to make a serious run. But Bloomfield Hills could be a sleeper if things go right for them. I mean, 
So we'll see what happens. I mean, obviously, when you look at the Blackhawks, when you look at the Dragons, I think the Dragons have a great chance to make, to do some damage. I mean, like, we'll see come postseason time. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens, but I think Lake Orion's got a great opportunity ahead of them. So we'll see what happens. Um, We'll see what happens there. Um, Let's go now from softball. Let's talk track and field. Obviously, you look at, of course, the... um. You know, let's, re let's recap the Farmington Invitational. Um, obviously, you look at the results. Um, you know, the score, you look at the results, obviously. Oak Park, of course, winning the girls pretty handily with um, 98 points. Obviously, the difference had to be the um, the relays, um, the hurdle relays, uh, hur the hurdles and the, also the relays, of course. We know how good that the Knights are there in those areas. Rochester was fourth with 48 points, tied for fourth in over Huron. West Bloomfield was sixth with 45 points. Um, Clarkson was 11th, tied for 11th with Royal Oak with 20 points each. Farmington was 13th with four, 17 points. Bloomfield Hills was 14th with 14 points. Um, Rochester Adams was 19th with nine points. Um, Oxford was 26th with them. Um, Five, with four points tied with Lake Orion um, and Heartland with four points each. Troy was 29th with three points. Stony Creek was tied for 30th with Utica and Gross Point North. Um, Berkeley was at, and Berkeley was 30 with 30 points and Seaholm was 34th with one point. So kind of really, you know, when you look at the girls' side of things, um, give credit where credit's due, though. Oak Park. They're going to be a big-time threat come leagues, also big-time threat come regionals. Um, their girls' team is on a mission. I mean, they train. I know they train year in, year out. I mean, they they go to in, in, indoor invitationals. They go to, you know, they compete everywhere. And you look at what Oak Park has done. I mean, historically, you know what they are more than capable of. and. I think when you look at the Knights, where they're at right now, I mean, there's no doubt that they're going to be the favorite in the um in the league coming up at West Bloomfield on Thursday. And we're going to preview the league coming up shortly here. But but when you look at what they did at Farmington, it's at, it's very impressive what they did. I mean, they beat some heck of good teams. Like Farmington's Mercy. They're having a nice year this year. I mean, the Marlins are having a great year this year. I mean, Plymouth Salem's another one, another solid team. But the team I've been most impressed with that was in the top five was Rochester. And the reason why I look at the Falcons is Rochester, you know, they've got, I mean, they've got some balance. I mean, they got a little bit of balance. Um, they're a solid girls team. I mean, really solid. Um I know how good West Bloomfield's been all year long. They got a really good freshman in Cameron Flowers. Um, I'll tell you what, she's legit. She is really good. I mean, like, Flowers from West Bloomfield, she is really legit. Um, I'm telling you, I mean, West Bloomfield in the girls, in the sprints, they could be scary. I mean, they're that good. I mean, they're that good in the sprints. They're that good in the relays. I mean, like, they could give Oak Park some problems, I think, in the league. Don't be surprised if they do in the sprints because, you know, obviously Oak Park's got the sprint relays. They got the hurdles. Um, they, could give them a, they could give them a run. Who knows? I mean, yeah, Oak Park is very good, but they could give them a run, seriously. Um, I really think that, you know, when you look at Clarkston, obviously – in Royal Oak, obviously, with Ellie Finch, um, you know, in the throws, obviously, we know how good Ellie Finch is in the throws. Um, Royal Oak, you know, they got some balance. Farmington, we know how good they are, and the, they got some balance as well. Bloomfield Hills has been solid. I mean, so when you look at the girls' side of things, I mean, you know, bottom line is, and then, of course, you look at um, Rochester Adams, you look at Oxford, Lake Orion, um, Troy, Stony Creek, Utica, Berkeley, and Seaholm, all those teams that scored, um, they got some good teams. I mean, they all got some really, really good teams. And I think bottom line is, you know, when you look at it, um, 
you know, it, it's going to come down to is, you know, when you look at from last week, you know, the league's going to be really interesting to see. I mean, it'll be really interesting to see how it goes. Um, let's go on from the girls' side to the boys' side of the Farmington Invitational. Um, Walled Lake Central won that meet with 69 and a half, obviously running with the throwing program. We know how good that program's been. Um, West Bloomfield, 56 points, second place. Um, Lake Orion took fourth with 44 and a half. Adams was fifth with 41. Troy was seventh with 32. Clarkson at 29. Oak Park was 10th, tied for 10th with 23 with Plymouth. Um, Berkeley was 17th, tied for 17th with 14 points. Um, and then you look at, um, I mean, North Farmington was 26th with 6 points. Farmington was 29th with 5 points. Rochester was tied for 30th with Marquette and Chippewa Valley with 4 points. Um, Royal Oak was tied for 33rd with Stony Creek and Wall Lake Western with 3 points. Um, Bloomfield Hills had 2 points with 37th. And tied for 38th was Avondale. Of course, they were tied with Livonia Churchill, Plymouth Salem. And South Lion East with one point each. So when you look at, you know, when you look at a course, I think the red white, the red white meet's going to be interesting in the boys' side. I think between Lake Orion and Rochester Adams. Um, obviously, you know, when you look at, when you look at a course, um, but when you look at what happened, I mean, but West Bloomfield, they're going to be, they should be the favorite in the, um, Heading in the leagues this weekend. I mean, the way they played at Farmington, we know the sprints they got. Um, the sprints have been just absolutely very good for them. Um, Lake Orion, we know how good the Dragons are. I mean, the Dragons have balance. Um, you know, when you look at what Coach Andrew McDonald's done with the Dragons, I mean, he's done a really good job with that program since taking over for legendary Coach Dan Ford. Um, Rochester Adams, we know how good Eric Lore's done that program. He has done a wonderful job that program. Um, Troy had a nice showing. I mean, at farm seven, 32 points. I mean, that says a lot. I mean, two behind Ann Arbor Huron. Ann Arbor Huron's been a proven power all year long. Um, Clarkson had a nice showing with 29 points. I mean, like, you know, so when you look at it here, and then, of course, some Oak Park. Tied in the top 10 with 23 points. So that kind of tells you the OA was well represented <laughs> over at the Farmington Invitational. I mean, that kind of tells you something right there. When you have all these proven quality teams there, you know, it, it, it makes a lot of noise. It makes a lot of head wave. I mean, obviously, when you look at, you know, the performances of, um, you know, of, of these athletes, especially in the guys, um, bottom line is, you know, you know, bottom line is, you know, you know, they performed really well on Saturday over at um over at Farmington, you know, with the um with the invitational there. I mean, give credit where credit's due. I mean, they competed well. So now this brings up we're gonna preview of course in a couple minutes here the league the league meets coming up, which is gonna be very interesting. The regional could be really interesting to watch as well because you know, the regional, that is next weekend. Um, and I think it's going to be interesting to see how um, to see how um, these teams play out. I mean, like, obviously, when you really look at, you know, when you really look at it here. So, you know, obviously, when you look at the um, invitationals from last week, um, the big one at Farmington, you know, a lot of good performances, a lot of great, um, you know, a lot of great, um, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of good things happening. You know, a lot of great things happening. Obviously, um, when you look at it. So, let's look at now. Let's go from the um, let's go. Let's pre. Let's start previewing the um league meets coming up. Obviously, when you look at the um OA um league meets, obviously that is going to be big. Um, those are going to be big, big deals. Obviously, um, we're going to look at of course the um. You know the um the um red the um blue gold meet that's going to take place on Thursday over at West Bloomfield. Um, you're going to look at obviously the um, you know you're going to look at the um, you know you, 
in that meet, of course, you have all the blue teams there. You got all the gold teams there. Um, Oak Park, Farmington, North Farmington, West Bluefield are going to be teams that really want. You have Groves and Seaholm are going to be there. Royal Oak will be there. I mean, Berkeley, Ferndale, Ferndale U, Pontiac, Avondale, they're going to all be there. Um, when you look at this meet, on the girls' side, you're going to kind of really want to keep a close eye on Oak Park. Because Oak Park, you know, they got those sprints. They got the sprint relays. They got the hurdle re I mean, like, they got the hurdle relays. I mean, in this type of point setup, you're going to go 10 8 6 5 4 3 2 1. And honestly, when you look at this meet, you know, this is where I think it's a golden opportunity. Yeah, Oak Park's going to be the favorite. No doubt about it. They're going to be the favorite because of what they got. I mean, they got a lot of proven talent on that team. They got a lot of proven talent. But I think West Bloomfield's got a shot here for several reasons. Because they're at home. They're at, you know, they have, they, they can do some damage. I think they can do some damage in the sprints. Couldn't they challenge Oak Park in the sprints? That's the big question. That is the million-dollar question, is can they challenge Oak Park in the sprint? And if they do, look out. Because I think West Bloomfield, they are a deeper team in Oak Park. But Oak Park, we know how good they can get with their talent in certain events. I mean, obviously, that's where the key's going to be when you look at the Knights. <laughs> but the bottom line is, when you look at Oak Park, I mean... Here's a team that can do some damage. And I think Oak Park's got a great chance. You know, yeah, they're gonna do some they're gonna do well, but I think West Bloomfield, if things go right, can really do can really help their cause here. But when you look at West Bloomfield's weakness, it's the distance. I mean, if they can find some distance in this meet, then I think West Bloomfield's got a great chance. You know, who knows? They could creep in on Oak Park. Because Oak Park does have a little bit of field events, not real much. I mean, they rely a lot on their sprints, and they rely a lot on their relays. They also rely on their hurdle relays. So if they can have find just enough field event points, then Oak Park, no doubt, is going to be the favorite. But West Bloomfield, they could do some damage. Um, on the other side, you have, um, in distance, this is where I think a team like a, Ber a, a Berkeley could do well here. A team like a Seahome could do well here. Of course, Seahome, well known for their distance. Um, maybe even Royal Oak. I mean, Royal Oak could do well in this type of meet because they can score. They got they got distance and they also got field events. I mean, like, that's where I think Royal Oak can do the bulk of their scoring is in those areas. I mean, I think that's where... You know, that's probably where it's going to be. I mean, Berkeley could be a sleeper in this meet. Um, They'll probably score some points. Do I think, are they, you know, but I think, you know, when you look at it, bottom line is, when you really look at it here, is can anybody match up to Oak Park in the girls? That is the big question. West Bloomfield, I think, has got the best shot. Um... Farmington, North Farmington, I don't know if they match up pretty well with them. Um, I know Ferndale will score some points for sure. Ferndale, you will score some points. Um, <coughs> Pontiac will, Avondale will. Um, but I think it's going to be really interesting to see how um, how these teams match up. Especially, Ken, is there a girls team that can withhold, sustain, I think... I think probably one of the best track teams in the state of Michigan in Oak Park. and But the question for Oak Park is going to be is, do they have enough depth? That's the big time question for the Knights is, can they handle the depth? I mean, that is the um, big question going forward for them. Um, let's go with the boys. I mean, obviously, when you look at the boys' side of things, this is where I think could be this could be really interesting because you got some quality teams here. In this meet. Yes, West Bloomfield is going to be the favorite. For several reasons. West Bloomfield. They have the sprints. 
They don't have a lot of distance, which is interesting. But the big question I have for them is can they handle, you know, can they, you know, when you look at the teams that they're doing, dealing with, I know North Farmington's a sleeper team to watch. Um, I know Groves could be a wild card. Seahome could be a wild card. Berkeley could be a wild card. Oak Park, you know, I'm curious to see with Oak Park what they have. Um, yeah, Oak Park had a top 10 showing at Farmington last week. Farmington kind of really disappointing um, on their home meet, uh, on their home track last week at the Farmington Invitational. Um, but I'm curious to see how, um, I'm really curious to see how, you know, if there's a team that can match up to West Bloomfield. I mean, see home, we know they have the distance to match up with them. But we also know Royal Oak has distance. We also know Berkeley's got distance. And I think Berkeley's got field events. I mean, when you look at West Bloomfield, I mean, on the girls' side, they have the field events. They have the field events on the boys' side. So I think that could be a player, you know, going forward if for West Bloomfield is those field events could be the wild card for the Lakers. You know, obviously with the sprint relays, you have the distance relays, um, you have the hurdles. I mean, just a lot of, just a lot of things you got to look at with West Bluebird. I mean, they could be a sleeper. You know, they, they're, they're the reason why, they're the reason why they're one of the favorites in the boys this year. They're, they're one of the favorites, not only in the, in the, in the league meet this week, but also in the regional. You know, they're one of the favorites because of their sprints. Their sprints are that good. They're that legit. They're very good. I mean, they're going to give, they're going to give, I think, Maybe Oak Park. I think Oak Park right now is the second best team in the um. They're the second best team right now in this league, heading into the league meet over at West Bluefield because of they have the athletes they can do. They're trying to get back to where they've been in years past. I mean, last year they really struggled. Um, they really struggled, and you know, you they get they got they lost to Farmington. They lost to North Farmington. Um. You know, they had some really tough losses um, early in the year. I mean, like, it's just when you look at Oak Park's training training schedule, obviously, you know, their training schedule, we know what they do. I mean, like, obviously, you know, I know that I know that system that they run. It's a, it's a tough system that they run, but, you know, it's very effective, and you can see it. But even though the weakness, their weakness, obviously, is going to be depth, and that's going to be, I think, the key here is can a team get to Oak Park's depth? I mean, certainly, you know, West Bloomfield can. I mean, obviously, with the depth they have. I mean, like, you know, when you look at the Lakers, I mean, the depth they have, they can do some damage there. Um, but can there be another team that could that can make some noise? I mean, Berkeley, Royal Oak, we've already talked about them. Does Groves and Seaholm have a chance? I mean, we don't know if those two teams... Do how they match up in this type of meet, um, and then of course you got Ferndale. You got you got Ferndale could be a sleeper. I mean, you know Ferndale will probably score some points. Ferndale University will score some points. Um, I mean, and of course you have Farmington, Farmington, and North Farmington. Of course, Farmington. We know what they got. I mean, honestly, when you look at this meet over at West Blue on the boys' side, um, I think. When you look at projections on in the, in the blue gold meet for both girls and boys, <laughs> on the girls side you got to give it to Oak Park. Um, I think the Knights really have they have the um the hurdles they have the sprints down. Distance is a little bit of a question mark for me with the Knights. Do they have enough field events? That's a big time question I for Oak Park. I think that um West Blue will give them a rally. I think we'll give them a scare. I think they will give them a scare, but. You know, if it comes, but the key is, does West Bloomfield have enough distance? That's a big question. And can teams like Royal Oak, Seaholm, um, Berkeley, can they help a team like Oak Park and neutralize West Bloomfield? Because they do got another advantage in the field events as well. So I expect that's going to be a very tight meet over there at um, West Bloomfield um, on the girls' side. But I got to get the edge of Oak Park in that scenario there. On the boys' side, um, I like West Bloomfield because when you really look at the Lakers, 
balance, depth, speed. They have the sprint to do well. Distance is the big question. Um, Oak Park, there's some questions with the Knights. They're in the distance. Um, but like I said, if, if it comes down to a game of speed and depth, I got to give the edge to the Lakers. Being at home, um, that's going to help them a lot. I mean, like, but honestly, bottom line is you got to go win in doubt. Go with the home team. You know, I expect Berkeley and Royal Oak to really do some damage in the in the field events and also in the distance as well. See, you know, could be, Groves could be a sleeper as well. I mean, Groves is a, another team to watch. So, you know, a lot to look at over there at West Bluebill on Thursday um, when you look at that meet. Um, let's go now from the blue-gold meet to the red-white meet that will take place on Friday at Rochester Adams. I mean, this is going to be really interesting. Um, on the girls' side, I mean, you got some quality teams here. You got Troy. You got Oxford. Um, you got Clarkston. Rochester, you got Adams, you got Lake Orion. Um, when you look at the, when you look at the red white meat, I mean, early in the year, I would think I would have thought that Oxford would be the team to beat. <laughs> now, Oxford has not had the most successful regular season. I mean, obviously they've had some really tough losses. I mean, like I thought Oxford would be better than what I've seen. I mean, like, I thought they would be much better than what I what I thought that, that they would be, but they've really, they've had some tough losses. I mean, they've had some close losses. I mean, they lost to, like, Orion close. Then they lost to Clarkson close. Um, But when you look at Oxford, could this could be a golden opportunity for them for some redemption. Because when you really look at it here for Oxford, you know, I thought coming into the year, I thought Oxford would make a lot of noise. I mean, they did really well in cross country, uh, but they have, it has not really performed well in the track. And, you know, it's really, it's, it's really tough. I mean, like, honestly, because I thought Oxford would be, would be a little bit much. I had Oxford, you know, at the start of the year, I thought they had a great chance to win the division. But, you know, they, they've had, they've really, I, I, I really feel like, and honestly, I really think they've underperformed this year. I mean, I think Oxford has really underperformed this year. I mean, but everything can be made up well in the league meet. Um, Troy is an interesting team because Troy can score in points. They can score in bunches. I mean, they're a team that I think could do really well in this meet. Stony Creek's a sleeper. So is Bloomfield Hills. I mean, Bloomfield Hills... I think the Blackhawks, you know, if things go right, they could surprise, but I don't know if they have the depth. Um, Troy's another one, but like I said, they got the same problem as Boombie Hills. Depth's a big time question mark for them. Um, but I think, you know, when you look at on the girls' side, you know, Rochester's had a nice year. Um, Lake Orion's been on and off. Clarkson's been on and off. I mean, it's been a crazy year in this league. It's been really crazy um, with how things have gone. Um, but when I look at the early projections, and I look at, I look at, of course, can this be Oxford's redemption tour? That's the big question because I really thought, I really think that Oxford, th this is a golden opportunity for the for redemption because. You really look at, of course, the expectation they had this year that they really had not lived to them. They really haven't. I mean, obviously, we have an experienced team like they do um, coming into the year. But I'm telling you, I think if if Oxford can win this league meet, you know, it makes up. Does it make up for what happened during the season? Probably not. But, you know, it'll be a heck of an accomplishment for them. And, and some much-needed confidence heading into that tough regional over at Milford for the next week. Um, we're going to preview that next week, that regional, um, which is going to be really interesting over there at Milford. Um, just uh, just don't understand how the MHA at times, you know what I mean, could reseed teams, take them to different places. Um, you know, some of them just been a little out of whack this year. I mean, like, you look at a course like, 
you put Northern Oakland County and Lapeer County and you send them to Milford, I mean, that's insane. I mean, that really is insane. I mean, honestly, that's really insane. Um, but I think when you look at the girls' side, obviously, yeah, Rochester's a wild card in this, obviously. Um, but when I look at the girls, girl side of it, if Oxford can do what they've been capable of doing all season long, I think they got a great chance to win this region. Um, now people, teams like, like Oregon can say, wait a minute, what about us? Or what about Clarkston? Um, they could, they could surprise some folks. I mean, obviously, but I really think when you look at if things go right, I think if for Oxford, if things go right for them, I think they got a great chance to win this region. Um, so we'll see what happens. I mean, we will seriously see what happens. Um, but I think it's going to come down to is can, you know, Oxford live up to the expectations they were given early in the year. They haven't, they haven't done so, but this could be a very good redemption tour for them if they can win this regional, if they can win this league meet. Um, and, you know, we'll see what happens from there. But Troy, I think, will be a sleeper to watch. Boopy Hills could be another team to watch. Lake Orion, Rochester. I mean, but right now, with everything that I have right now, I've got to give the edge to Wildcats here. But we'll see. We will see. Um, let's go to the boys now. Um, when you look at the boys' side, I mean, like, you got Rochester Adams winning the red title. Um, we know how good that this senior class has been for Rochester Adams. You look at what they've been doing in all sports. You look at, of course, football, boys basketball. You look at, of course, golf. You look at, um, soccer, boys soccer. I mean, I mean, winning state titles in, I think it's girls golf and, um, and, um, boys soccer. I mean, they won a state title in football, made the state quarterfinal in boys basketball. Um, winning your first regional in school history. I mean, and of course, you look at, of course, with baseball. I mean, they made, they made some noise in baseball. Softball had an incredible run. Um, cheerleading. I mean, you look, at, you look at what that senior class has done at Rochester Adams. It says a lot to what they have done. That senior class at Rochester Adams, you got to give a ton of credit to. They have done a wonderful job athletically this season. And you look at what they've done in track and field, winning a league title. Um, Coach Eric Lohr has done a really nice job with that team. I mean, they got pure, they got mid-distance, which is solid. Their hurdles are very good. Their distance is very good. Their sprints are very good. Their field events are solid. I mean... They got the complete package. But I think there's one team that stands in their way. And that's Lake Orion. Now, yes, the Highlanders beat the Dragons earlier in the year at Lake Orion. But Lake Orion has gotten them in this type of tournament setting. They got them at, um, at Oxford. When Lake Orion won the um, Oxford Invitational. And then they got them at Farmington last week, you know, Lake Orion took fourth, Adams took fifth. So the last two weeks, you know, Coach Andrew McDonald's out coached Coach Eric Lohr. That's really what it's been. Now you have the league meet on Adams' home track, and this is going to be very interesting because I will be very curious to see what Andrew McDonald does. Coach Andrew McDonald does. Really curious to see what he does because. The Adams, you know, is going to go hard and all out on their home track. So I'm curious to see what, what he does, how he matches them up. Lake Orion's got the sprints. They have the distance. Hurdles will be interesting to watch. I think not having pole vault hurts the Dragons in this. Because normally pole vault, you know, pole vault is usually a big-time event, you know, for a team like Lake Orion to make a ton of noise. So I think not having pole vault 
kind of hurts them in this. Other teams to watch for, I think it can make some noise. I think Oxford's got a shot. Um, Obviously, you know, as I talked about earlier in the girls, the boys have really kind of underperformed this year. Clarkston is another one. I think the Wolves could do some damage this year. I mean, they could do some damage in this meet. I mean, they got the sprints. They got the distance. Um, but I think Clarkson's a team that can really make leeways <coughs> and make some noise in this meet. Um, I think Stony Creek's another one. I think they can make some noise in this one. Rochester is another one that I think could do very well in this meet. Um, but when you look at it here in this type of meet, it's going to come down to is Ken. You know Adams will be the favorite in this. And you know Adams has lost to Lake Orion in the last two weeks. <coughs> but Lake Orion knows if they win this meet, they've clinched at least a share of the title with Adams. If Adams wins, they win this division outright. They win this league outright. Now you're adding in the white. And obviously you got Bloomfield Hills there. You got Pont you got um you got um Stony Creek's there. You got Troy, Troy Athens. Um those teams are in there. And I think they could do some damage. They could really well do some make some noise. They can really well do some damage. Um could they spoil somebody? Absolutely. I mean, you look at what Troy did. I mean, Troy, they were sevens. They could be a player in this. I mean, like, when you look at it here, you got Adams, Lake, Orion, and Troy. They could make some noise. Clarkson's another one, you know, that can make some noise. Oxford's probably the most dangerous team in here. I mean, that's really what it is, is what team peaks on the right day. It's what's going to come down to. Is what team peaks. At the right day. I mean. And I think bottom line is. You know when you look at it here. If you were a betting man. You got to go with Rochester Adams. Because of home track. You got to go with experience. Adams has that. Um, You got to look at a course. You know I think that's what's going to come down to. Is. Does Adams, you know, if Adams wants to prove prove themselves, you got to win this league, and you're one of, and you're gonna be a very and, it, and your regional is really interesting going to Detroit Renaissance because that regional, I think Adams has a great chance at that regional. Yes, got to deal with Oak Park, you got to deal with Detroit Renaissance, but I'll tell you what, I mean Adams is in a really interesting spot. I mean, and this is where the regional, it kind of gets really weird because you got Lake or you got a team like Lake Orion, Clarkston, Oxford, um, I mean, all the, and Lapeer even, all those teams are heading down to Milford. Whereas you look at Adams, Rochester, Stony Creek are all heading down south to Detroit, to Detroit Renaissance. So, this is going to be interesting to see. I, I'm not sure how the MHA divided this line. Basically, how they divided it, I guess, was I don't know what the divider line is. I would love to have an explanation from the MHA. I would really love to have that explanation. Because, and say, like, how in the world you look at a team like like, Lake Orion and Adams, they're only separated by four miles. And you got Lake Orion going down to Milford, and you got Adams having to go down to Detroit. I mean, like, you know, to Detroit Renaissance. So, that's going to be a tough explanation how to explain that. So, I'm curious to see how this is going to go. But then you got a team like Grand Blank, you know, a couple years ago. You know, they went up to Alpena. You know, they went up to, they went up to mid-Michigan. I mean, where they had it, they were in a regional with Alpena. So, really, curious to see what the MHA decides on this. But, that's for next week. But when you look at the league, obviously, when you look at the league, it, 
I think this meet's going to be Adams's to take. I mean, to lose. Um, Lake Ori, I think, is going to be Adams's top toughest challenger. Um, but the bottom line is, when you look at Adams, you know, I think you know Adams and Lake Ori and Troy are going to be Adams's top challengers. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see what happens going forward there. Really, really interesting to see what happens. Um, others, I mean, like other sports, obviously, your girls' soccer, Rochester, you know, still is the team to beat there. Um, Rochester's having a really nice year. I mean, obviously, a lot of that has to be with the um, girls' basketball players they have on that team. Um, you know, Natalie Race, you got Alice Max in goal, Kylie Robinson's been playing very well for them. Um, but Rochester, they're, they're going to be scary come postseason time. But then that question is, that kiss of death district in soccer over at Swinehart, that's going to be interesting to watch um, when you look at all three Rochesters, uh, all three Utica schools, Lake Orion's also in there. Um, so it'll be really inter interesting to watch. Um, Troy Athens, I think, has got a great shot to do, some, to do well in their district. Um, and I think that um you know and they got an all OA district over at um over with Troy and um Bloomfield Hill so very curious to see what happens to them going forward there um Farmington of course um in North Farmington they got it'll be interesting to see what happens there with them so and then you got Pontiac Pontiac Harper Woods I mean Harper Woods got it tough with both growth points um Pontiac I think they got a good chance to do well. Ferndale, I think, has got a chance. Um, even though they're in a tough district in Div in, Div in Division One, um, so we'll see what happens going forward. Um, in girls soccer, baseball, obviously, I still think it's going to come down to Lake Orion, West Bloomfield, Rochester Adams. I still can't believe West Bloomfield lost to Oxford, um, which was a very which was a which was a surprise. What I thought, you know what I mean? But give credit that where credit's due. Oxford, really good, really interesting team. Um, I'm curious to see what happens with them going forward. Um, you know, the red, red can be really, really wacky, um, at this time of year. So we'll see what happens going forward. Everybody want to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Um, obviously covering, of course, we're keeping an eye on the boys basketball coaching searches over at Oxford and Rochester Adams. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward there when it comes to, um, when it comes to the um, head coaching search for both schools. So, all right, I'm going to sign off here. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week. Take care, and I will see you all next week. And God bless everyone. God bless.